hypocrite. Be unafraid. Do your job. Bring common sense gun control legislation to a vote. We need it, and we need it now. After a gunman opened fire on a crowd in Las Vegas, killing 58 people and injuring more than 500 others, Democrats in Congress are again attempting to buck the GOP's inaction on gun control and push through legislation that would ban bump stocks, the accessory that allowed the gunman to fire on that crowd at nearly the rate of a machine gun. On Friday, I spoke to Congressman John Lewis about that and more. Congressman Lewis, thank you so much for joining me. Um, you uh, were the principal speaker in one of several House members who held a rally on Wednesday in Capitol Hill calling for tougher gun control laws. We've been here before. We were here after Newtown. You let us sit in on the House floor calling for tougher laws. Do you think that we've reached one of those turning points where now something could actually get done? Well, it is my hope that we have reached a point where we will get some action on the part of the House and the Senate and send a major piece of legislation to the president to sign into law. Uh, we just have witnessed too much. Uh, you know, I've been around for a while. I witnessed the assassination of Martin Luther King Jr. by a man with a rifle. I was in Bobby Kennedy's room at the Ambassador Hotel in Los Angeles have been campaigning for him. I'm watching television, watching him make his victory statement of speech, been shot down by a guy with a handgun. We have to do something about the proliferation of gun violence. And as Dr. King was saying, the time is always right to do right, and we must do right. We're losing more than 30,000 of our citizens a year as a result gun violence. You have to stop, and it must stop. I, I know in certain neighborhoods, parents are afraid to send their children to school because of what could happen to them. And, and Congressman, you know, you mentioned, of course, uh, you know, Dr. King's assassination, Bobby Kennedy. After those assassinations, that did spur Congress on to pass uh, at the time, you know, meaningful gun control legislation. You know, you cannot buy machine guns because there was gun control legislation that the NRA supported. Um, shipping guns through the mail became illegal because of legislation that at the time the NRA supported. Is it time for members of Congress to turn against the NRA since it has now turned against gun control? It is time for the Congress uh, to, to be brave, to be bold, uh, to be courageous. Uh, I've said just a few days ago that we should be headlights and, and not taillights, that we will call to lead and we must get out there and push. The American people, more than 90 percent of the American people, both Democrats and Republicans, want us to do something. We must not lose and just live in fear and, and not be afraid of the whether we're going to lose some votes here or there, or that we will not receive political contribution. We have to do what is right. Sometimes you have to go with your gut, with your heart, with your soul. And, and uh, you know, House Speaker Paul Ryan threatened to sanction you and other members of Congress if you repeated the sit-in that you did previously on the House floor. Are you prepared to sit in again uh, in support of gun reform legislation, and are you concerned about being sanctioned? Well, I'm not afraid uh, of being sanctioned or uh, being arrested and taken to jail uh, for engaging in nonviolent action or sometimes peaceful protest. We have a right to protest in an orderly, peaceful, nonviolent fashion. The members, our caucus members, uh, are not afraid. So we are prepared to use uh, other steps and Methodists uh, to dramatize the issue, to make it real, to make it plain, to help educate and sensitize the American community where we are. The people are ready for action. Those of us in the Congress, too many of us are not ready. But I, I do think something is going to happen. It may take place on the Senate side before it takes place on the House side.
And you mentioned the right to peaceful protest. I, I, I feel compelled to ask you about the uh, proliferation of kneeling protests that have gone through the NFL. Colin Kaepernick, of course, started it years ago, uh, and now it has uh, really sort of, you know, spread throughout um, the National Football League. Uh, you had LeBron James uh, chastise the president of the United States for attacking players who choose to kneel. What do you think of the kneeling protests? Oh, uh, it was so inspiring to see these young men standing with their owners and standing with um, managers and coaches. It, it's, it is saying something, it's all right. It's saying, in effect, that when you see something that is not right, not fair, not just, you have to say something, you have to do something. It's guaranteed and protected by the First Amendment to the Constitution. People telling us, don't do this, don't do that. We have a right to do it. Some of these people would have said, back in the 60s, don't go on the Freedom Rides. Don't participate in a sit-in at the lunch counter. Don't march on Washington. Don't march from Selma to Montgomery. You have a right to march. It's protected and shielded by the flag. And would a, would a young John Lewis, uh, if you were, you know, among those players, would you kneel at the national anthem? Yeah, if I uh, if I was on that coach with that coach with that owner, I would kneel with the players. A young John Lewis would kneel, and we may be kneeling in Washington in in a few days to come. Maybe on the floor of the, of the house. Maybe in Statuary Hall. Maybe in the rotunda, maybe on the steps of the Capitol. I, I want to ask you one more question. And, and yourself and Eric Holder, the former Attorney General of the United States, have come together uh, to fight another thing that is, uh, you know, with so much going on, and that is this issue of gerrymandering. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about, you know, your position on gerrymandering? There is a Supreme Court case now uh, being teed up. Um, what are you and the former Attorney General doing, and your thoughts on gerrymandering? Well, I, I think we got to deal with the whole question of gerrymandering, how the legislated districts and lines are being drawn, not just at the federal level, but also at the state and, and local levels. Um, we have too many politicians today selecting their voters rather than the voters selecting them. Uh, I think it's a good thing uh, to make the political bodies much more democratic. Congressman John Lewis and civil rights uh, legend John Lewis, it's always an honor to talk to you, sir. Thank you very much for your time. Well, thank you. And coming up, my panel weighs in on whether the tragedy in Las Vegas will finally move Congress towards sensible gun legislation. Stay with us. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.